bare feet and summer dresses bring the story of a journey across the world alive through dance. This is Windrush, Movement of the People, from the Phoenix Dance Theatre production. It's currently on the national tour, and for the artistic director, it's a story close to her heart. My mother, when she came here, her job was to make sure she looked after the family and brought those that were left in the Caribbean across. My father arrived here first and set up home for the family. So it was a real sense that, you know, they came, they came to work for the country, they came to support and change their lives, change the lives of the citizens here in the UK after the war. And for me, when I sit and talk to my mother about the story, it was just so heartfelt. And I don't think she's actually seen her story told in dance. And the thing about telling the story in dance, it's quite multi-generational, isn't it? It most certainly is, because I was born here in the UK. I'm not going to say when, but I was born here in the UK and um, my brothers and sisters that came across from the Caribbean brought with them a story. And I think as we grew together, developed, uh, schooled here, you begin to see that integration, you begin to see the change. I now have children of my own, and for them, it's important that they know the story. Sharon's retelling of that story is helping younger audiences understand the sacrifices made by their elders 70 years ago. It's part of a season celebrating the Windrush anniversary at the Midlands Arts Centre in Birmingham. It includes work by photographer Andrew Jackson, which asks a question about dual identity over the decades. They came here with a strong identity of Britishness. You know, they weren't immigrants, they were British citizens. And, um, you know, they were socialised to, 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 to see Britain as a, as a motherland. They were educated through the British educational system. When they came to Britain, they were British in their minds. You know, when they went to the cinema, they played a the national anthem, people stood up. When they came to England and they realised that nobody was standing up, they were shocked. From photography to dance to documentaries, generations today are playing their part in ensuring the Windrush story doesn't disappear in the future. Patrick Vernon, a filmmaker from Wolverhampton, has made a documentary about Eddie Martin Noble, who came to Britain from Jamaica. There were 10,000 of us by the end of the war that were in the Air Force. And 99.9% .9 of us never went beyond the rank of sergeant. Eddie was one of 10,000 Caribbean people who served in World War II, and Patrick's work explores the historical relationships between the Caribbean islands and the mother country. One of my favourite quotes about Eddie is that he says, you cannot compel people to like you, but you can compel people to respect you. It's just great. He was angry, bitter, but charming at the same time. And in many ways, he reflects the characteristics of that generation of, he, of working hard, tolerant, but also willing to challenge the system when required. I've come to Derby to ask people what they know of the Windrush story. It's the Windrush generation, the generation that's sort of been ignored for all of their contributions to society. Have you heard of the scandal about people from the Caribbean islands being repatriated? No. No, I haven't heard of it. No. No? No. I'm going to say Windrush, what comes to mind? Uh, well, Theresa May and the debacle with the Windrush generation a few weeks ago. Lots of them are being deported because they're not being classed as British citizens even though they are. Catherine Ross from Nottingham has documented Windrush journeys for her museum and collection. She's worked with teams from the British Library and the Victorian Albert Museum to help educate future generations about the historic journey made. Every inch of a Caribbean's wall is covered in something. Um, it's generally family photos or religious paintings or religious sayings or whatever. But a lot of people covered it with um, wall hangings that told their friends, their children, things about the islands they were from. So this is one we've managed to find that tells you all the good things that Jamaicans are, telling you about the people and so on. Um, th over here, um, we, we laugh at this. This one of the first, one of the first things we sent home was um, uh, Mrs. Beaton's cookbook because a good Caribbean woman does not follow a cookbook. cookbook recipe, no, not at all. Recipe Don't follow at no all. recipes. It's a bit you of this. You dash it in. Bit. Just a bit of that. Bit of that. Let's try a bit of that. Wow, it tastes great. <laughs> That's right. But then when people um, back home wanted to see what English food was right. like, we sent them a copy yeah. of that. <laughs> From the lush gardens of the Caribbean to the country's most prestigious flower show, one of Britain's best-known personalities has made history in sharing the Windrush story like never before.
So how long did this take to come about? It, two years ago I had the vision of having um, a Windrush garden here at RHS Chelsea because I've been coming to Chelsea for the last 30 years. Yeah. And I thought, well, what better way to celebrate the 70th anniversary than having a Windrush garden? And here we are. It happened. And I'm so pleased. So we have come lovingly and givingly, openly, to this British nation, British nation. And I'm proud of being British. I'm proud of what you, people like you and Beverly Knight and all the kinds of people. We had Rose Hudson Wilkins this morning blessing the garden. People who've come to Britain and made such a change, such a difference. That's, the garden is for them, a legacy for all of us, all the things that we have done for Britain. And that gold award-winning garden from the Chelsea Flower Show is back on home soil in Birmingham. What's it going to be like, this being here in Birmingham? Well, we want to raise the profile of the Windrush generation and, and really what everybody has done to make Birmingham what it is, here, uh, such a special city at the moment. And we want to ra raise a profile, so we're hoping to, to make people ask questions. That's why we've got uh, all the school children's images around uh, the display. And we really want to make people ask lots of questions and, and find out about what the Windrush was. We met Carmen cooking away for her families at the beginning of the series. Her hearty homemade dishes have gone down a treat over lunch. You've been badger Jamaica many, 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 many times. times. How do you feel now? Well, I would still like to go back to Jamaica to live. It's still a dream of yours? Yes. But then again, yeah. I'm happy here, so... When it comes to Windrush, I mean, yeah. are you going to tell her? Do you expect... what? what I have. We've, we've tried to explain to Georgia because my mum's very passionate about it as well. And I think that Georgia's at that age where she wants to understand, you know, not everybody's the same colour and how did her mama get here? And just hearing like little Caribbean stories and songs, yeah. it's her heritage and she, she loves it. She finds it funny yeah. and she can't believe that, it, you know, Patwa is a language. And it's actually English, yeah. uh, but it does make her laugh, yeah. doesn't it? Would you like to go to Jamaica, Georgia? Maybe. Maybe, <laughs> yes. okay. Georgina is the latest generation to learn the Windrush story, one that will now be heard every year on June the 22nd, the annual Windrush Day. A heritage honed from a dual identity on Caribbean and British shores, with many tales taking the generations back to where it all began. Karaniaki go in stick market, what's a question else? Oh Lord, what a night, what a night, what a Saturday night. Oh Lord, what a night, what a night, what a Saturday night. Des Coleman, ITV News.